All right, uh, let us uh, continue with our uh, matrix theory review for this particular class as well and this is going to be our last in this series. So, we will see some of the concepts that we uh, quickly kind of skipped in the previous two lectures as well as little more examples and uh, I mean one or two uh, little more concepts as well as a few couple of examples to make our ideas clear actually. So, we will start with the very basic uh, definition that matrix was nothing but a, a rectangular matrix in general is of m by n, okay, it is a square of elements with m rows and n columns. And obviously, for each subscript i j, i means the row and j means the column and if m is equal to n, then it is supposed to be, I mean it is said to be a square matrix actually. So, these are all very basic definitions and uh, subsequently, uh, there is a related concept called vector and uh, if a matrix has just one row, it is called a row vector, if it is a one column, it is called a column vector. So, examples can be somewhat like this. Then related concept is null matrix, where the a matrix with all 0 elements, the matrix uh, contains all 0 elements, uh, all the elements are 0, then it is supposed to, I mean it is called a null matrix actually. Then diagonal matrix is a square matrix, where all of diagonal elements are 0. Okay. I mean you have some ent entries only here, I think this is a mistake here, this is uh, supposed to be, this is supposed to be a n n, okay. this is not 0, this is a n n. But any, anything other than that, okay, all the elements are uh, 0 basically. And related concept is, uh, is a triangular matrix, so in where you have upper triangular matrix means all these elements are also non-zero, some of them. That is, if you, if you have that kind of a situation, this is the upper triangular okay. and if you have uh, something like uh, the other side, that means the lower half is 0. Okay, then. Uh, I mean lower half is non-zero, these elements where the upper half is 0, then it is called uh, lower triangular matrix. So, diagonal element is a special case of a triangular matrix of course. Then there is a concept called linear dependence and linear independence, which, uh, which plays a very heavy role in uh, many analysis including control theory. So, let us see that. The formal definition is something like this, a set of uh, n column vectors and you can generalize it to row vectors as well, there is nothing uh, specific to column vector as such actually. A set of, a set of uh, n column vectors S1 to Sn is said to be linearly dependent, okay. if there exists uh, some constants alpha 1 to alpha n and this is critical, not all 0, that means every, every one of them cannot be 0, such that this equation is satisfied. That means, we are we want a non-trivial solution for alpha 1, alpha 2 to up to alpha n. That means, trivial solution being all the all of them are 0. Non-trivial solution is if you formulate this equation and try to find out a solution for alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n, all of them should not be 0 actually. Okay. Then it is called linearly, I mean, I mean they, they, then it is called uh, linearly dependent. And if the equation uh, holds good uh, uh, for all these things, then the vectors are linearly independent actually. Okay. What does it mean? So, I mean those of you know this uh, what is called linear combination and all. Out of all these vectors S1, S2 to Sn, one or more vectors are linear combination of the other vectors actually. Okay. If that happens, then the, those set of vectors are linearly dependent on each other. If the, all of them are independent, then uh, obviously no, nobody depends on any, I mean a combination of others cannot substitute in the, any one of them and hence uh, this kind of equation will be satisfied. Okay. Alpha 1 S 1, alpha 2 S 2 up to alpha n S n equal to 0 and if you formulate this equation, then you find a non-trivial set uh, in solution set. That means, alpha 1, alpha 2 uh, up to alpha n, all of them should not be 0 actually and if they, if they happen to be 0, then they are linearly independent. How do you find out quickly that these are all 0 or not? Okay. Now, if you if you know th uh, this is actually a vector equation, that means this zero is actually zero 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 n zeros there actually. Okay. That means if such a such a system of equation is satisfied, okay, for getting a non-trivial solution, if I formulate this uh, this vector, I mean this uh, matrix, okay, if I formulate this this matrix where s is s one, okay, s two, I just put them together up to s n, okay. This particular matrix must be non-singular. Okay, so so, uh, so so what I need to see that if I formulate the determinant equation, 
whether this is 0 or not actually the question is that okay. if they if they are uh, if they are uh, 0 then there exist a non trivial set of solution obviously okay and if they happen to be non zero then obviously this is this there is a non uh, non trivial solution and hence uh, the vectors are linearly dependent actually so let's see an example and now we want to see uh, the whether this a1 a2 a3 are linearly independent or not and going back to the definition it is slightly difficult that means if you keep on asking for the question whether whether our a1 is linearly dependent on a2 or a3 or a2 is linearly dependent on a1 and a3 then uh, it is not that easy to find linear combination set because there are infinite sets and how do you know whether that, that uh, condition exists or not. So, we will go back to that, that idea that we will formulate this, uh, this equation and ask this whether this determinant is 0 or not actually. So, we, so what is this, uh, the answer to that is we must test whether this equation x times a 1, y times a 2, z times a, a 3 is equal to 0 whether if I formulate this equation whether it admits any non trivial solution or not actually. Hmm. That means, if you put this a 1 first 1 1 0 then a 2 1 0 1 and then a 3 0 1 1 together and then take the determinant of that and in this case happens to be minus 2 which is not equal to 0 that is that is the more important actually. And hence because it is not equal to 0 okay, the, the vectors are linearly independent actually. Now, the rank of a matrix is equal to the uh, that okay, that uh, next concept is uh, rank of a matrix and uh, this is also a very critical uh, observation and plays a lot of role in, uh, in control theory as well as numerical methods things like that. So, we will see that uh, rank of a matrix uh, and it is in general the matrix need not be square here, it can be my n that means, it is a rectangular matrix in general. So, the rank of a rectangular matrix in general is equal to number of linearly independent rows or columns okay. and the rank can be found by finding the highest order square sub matrix that is non singular. Okay. That means, if I take a matrix like this and the first thing I have to see the, the largest order highest order square sub matrix that is non singular the highest order sub matrix here is the matrix itself. Okay. Then if I start checking from there then uh, this determinant happens to be 0. Okay. So, the matrix is singular and hence rank cannot be 3, it is a 3 by 3 matrix, but the largest order sub matrix is the matrix itself for which the determinant is 0 and hence the rank cannot be 3. So, we have to select all sort of 2 by 2 matrix out of this. For example, I can select uh, this particular set, I can select that one, I can select that one whatever it is really, whatever uh, possible sub matrices I will select for 2 by 2 next actually. Okay. So, I will select a B matrix out of that 1 minus 5 4 7 okay, and then determinant of B happens to be uh, 27 okay, you can see clearly that uh, 7 plus 20 so 20 is 27 is so not equal to 0. Okay. That means, we got a sub matrix of dimension 2 by 2 for which the determinant is not 0. So, then the rank is uh, 2 actually. So, that way you can find the rank of a matrix. Uh, and there are efficient algorithms also to find rank of a matrix and all, uh, because in general if you start uh, using this definition starting from the highest order and things like that, they are not that easy to, I mean it can be a lot of exercise before you find the, the answer actually. So, there are efficient algorithms to find rank actually. Now, basic operations I think all of you know anyway. Uh, so, this uh, I mean some of these concepts we, we skipped it uh, in previous uh, lectures. So, let us uh, quickly review that. So, we have a matrix A and matrix B, if you just want to add them together, first of them, first of all they have to be of same dimension. If, uh, if A is m by n, B must be m by n, so that you can add them together, otherwise it, this is not possible. And if that is the case, then it is just element by element addition actually. So, if you take this matrix and that matrix, just add them up element by element, 1 1 and 1 1 from B, 1 1 from A matrix and 1 1 from B matrix, if you add them together I will formulate 1 1 from C matrix actually. So, 2 plus 7 is 9, minus 1 and minus 5 is minus 6 like that actually. And subtraction is uh, similar, uh, you all that you have to do is uh, you, you subtract at, uh, element by element actually. So, this again if you say take the same example, this is the matrix C basically. 
Multiplication however is a slightly tricky affair, you can if you want to take a direct multiplication, okay, this is the direct multiplication that means if A and B are of similar dimension, same dimension rather, then you can just do element by element multiplication and that is uh, called a score uh, product or there is a particular name Hadamard product more popularly known as direct product because you are just simply directly multiplying actually. Okay. And these are some, so there are some applications, uh, uh, but most applications are related to this kind of an idea, okay, what, what is going on here. So it comes from vector space theory and more details you can find in a, a linear algebra book or things like that. Okay. So, the product of matrices uh, defined as something like this and the first of all, a, if A is m by n, then B has to be n by P. So, that is C has to be all right, if if, uh, if A is m by n, okay, then B has to be n by p, okay, so that C can be m by p. Okay. That means, these two elements what you see here, this n and this n, they have to be same actually, okay. otherwise you cannot do multiplication. And after you multiply this, the product uh, matrix will have a dimension m by p basically. Okay. So, one uh, example is something if you uh, if A is something like 2 by 3 matrix like this here and B is a 3 by 3. So, the product has to be 2 by 3 into 3 by 3 that means 2 by 3. So, this is how you the, the product is obtained all these elements. How do you get that? You, you take this row and multiply with this column element by element and then add them up actually. Okay. So, you take this way, okay, you take this way and then take that way okay, and then do element by element multiplication actually. Okay. So, that means, if you if you multiply with A 1 1, then you do B 1 1, then plus A 1 2 into B 2 1 plus A 1 3 plus B 1 B 3 1 like that will come in th this particular term will contain the A B 1 1 term actually. Okay. And similar things are there for the second uh, second column, third column like that. So, you take first row elements and first column elements that will formulate the 1 1 element. Otherwise, first column, first row element and third column element will formulate 1 3 element. This is what will pop up actually. So, all these things have a nice uh, geometrical meaning, I mean this algebraic meaning in vector space uh, approach and uh, because of that these are defined that way and uh, most of you I think know how to do this operation also. And once again this uh, this direct product does not have too much of uh, uh, application especially in control theory, okay. we will not uh, worry so much about that, uh, but this one will be of lot of years actually. Now, certain identities uh, uh, that uh, you can very clearly see and sometimes it is not that apparent. Uh, first of all, it is a commutative law. Now, say, I mean if you add A plus B, it does not matter whether you add elements of A to B or vice versa. So, A plus B is equal to B plus A simply because of the definition, whatever definition you see here is element by element addition anyway. So, it does not matter which order you had to add. However, A B is not equal to B A in general, that is a critical observation. So, we cannot, uh, we do not have the luxury of writing A B equal to B A or in, uh, interchanging the multiplication order is not allowed actually. And that is also very apparent, suppose I take uh, reverse the way that means, this matrix becomes n by m, this becomes n by p, I mean p by n, then obviously m is not equal to p, hence I cannot take the, cannot even take the uh, multiplication, forget about uh, visualizing whether it is equal to or not. Multiplication will not be defined in general. Okay. Uh, one side multiplication will be defined, but the other side may not be defined. And even if they are defined, okay, if you see this, uh, these elements and all, uh, th the way it will pop up, okay, these element, uh, I mean, uh, the product elements and all, in general, it may not satisfy this characteristic. The A B is not equal to B A, which we clearly have to remember. And if A B is equal to B A, then the, the definition is like A and B are supposed to, um, I mean, they, uh, it is it said that A and B commute with each other. That means, uh, if a matrix A and B commute, uh, that means if you see some statement somewhere like this, then uh, that is what it means A B equal to B A. It is a very special case, it will happen that way. However, associative law sense, it is there for both addition and, and, and multiplication. That means, whether you add A, I mean B plus C first and then add to A or you add A plus B first and then to C, 
we all both are uh, same actually and similar thing happens for multiplication as well. Okay. So, when you see associative law it is happens to both uh, addition and subtraction uh, whereas, commutative law is only valid for addition actually. Okay. Well, also remember that associative law uh, you do not have a luxury of changing the sequence especially in the multiplicative term. Okay. In addition term uh, probably it is okay because you can exchange whether you, whether you write a plus b plus c or a plus c plus b is probably okay. But in uh, associative law you do not have that luxury the order has to be same actually. Anyway, then the next thing is transpose of the sum. If you have a plus b transpose, it turns out is a transpose plus plus b transpose. It is also apparent, apparent from the from the addition law actually. Okay, if you because it is all its term by term or element by element addition, it just happens that this is very apparent actually. A plus b transpose if you take nothing but element if you take first take the transpose of a, then b, and then edit, then transpose of b, then edit up actually. So both are same. And interestingly, transpose of a product turns in a re reverse sequence, which is very interesting actually. See, if you a, a b whole transpose is not a transpose b transpose, is rather b transpose a transpose. Again, in a long hand algebra, you can show this actually. So, these are some critical observations, especially with respect to the product law actually. Summation law will be fairly straightforward, I mean, uh, many of these. But when you see a commutative thing, I mean, this product thing, it is first of all not necessarily commutative. I mean this one is okay, but transpose of a product is like B transpose A transpose, reverse sequence actually. Okay. Now, certain determinant identity also exists. Okay. Then the first thing is if you see determinant of a transpose is nothing but determinant of A, because suppose you evaluate determinant of A like a row expansion sense, then I can evaluate determinant of A transpose using, using a column expansion sense, it is one and the same thing actually. Okay. And this one is, uh, is most of the time we will use it also determinant of a b is equal to determinant of a into determinant of a this is a very useful property rather. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, rather useful actually. So, it will uh, using this you can also show some interesting things for example, if you if you really want to show some interesting thing let us say b is equal to I take a inverse actually. If I take that then determinant of uh, uh, I mean determinant of a b which is a a inverse okay obviously determinant of i actually right so this is one and that means determinant of so this is determinant of a into determinant of uh, a inverse okay equal to one that means determinant of a inverse is nothing but one by determinant of a okay so this is actually a very useful property in in that sense okay. many times we will uh, make use of this uh, this property actually and also here the determinant of a b happens to be determinant of b a as well. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, I mean pro provided this a b and b a are both defined, okay. both are defined and then you can do that actually. There is a another concept called trace operator, okay. trace is a very simple operator, but very handy sometimes because there are something related to some matrix norm and things like that later. So, trace a trace of an uh, like a matrix and is especially it is defined with a square matrix okay. is nothing but sum of the diagonal elements actually that is all you have to do you just see the sum the diagonal element just add them up no absolute values by the way it is simply algebraic addition actually. So, you have in this particular example 1 3 2 4 then you simply add 1 plus 4 it becomes 5 actually that is all. Now, we will see is the last uh, one uh, last uh, class I think uh, we did not uh, we just uh, had the concept of Eisen value Eisen vector, but we did not give an example. So, let us quickly see an example how to find out these Eisen values and all Eisen values and Eisen vectors of this particular 2 by 2 matrix. So, it is very clear that first we have to start with a characteristic equation. Okay. So, that is determinant of either you can take determinant of lambda i minus a and make it equal to 0 or take determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 I mean either way because eventually because whether you have a minus 1 to the power n it will pop up you know it is uh, okay. determinant of minus a is something like minus to the minus 1 to the power n into determinant of a something like that and then if because it is equal to 0 that minus 1 to the power n does not play a role I mean either way you can cancel that actually. So, you take a minus lambda i 2 okay, then expand that up whatever equation pops up 
okay. and then in this particular case you can just find out that this uh, these eigen values are like this minus 1 and 4 okay. All right. So, this also is a small comment here that note that this eigen values are actually real okay. but the vector what the matrix is not necessarily symmetric. Okay. However, if you if you start with a symmetric matrix, you are guaranteed to get real eigen values. That one of the theorems we say, we saw last class actually. Okay. Here we get eigen values as real eigen values, but the matrix not doesn't necessarily have uh, this one. This uh, uh, I mean the symmetric matrix. So if you remember one of the theorems, uh, what we really need is the the I mean the guarantee will be if the eigen vectors will be orthogonal actually. If, the, if it eigen vectors are orthogonal, then it is guaranteed to have a symmetric matrix, otherwise not. So, that is just a comment. So, now coming back to uh, finding eigen values and eigen vectors. Okay. So, this uh, lambda 1 is uh, minus 1 and lambda 2 is 4, that is what we um, found. By the way, there is a small uh, print mistake here, this is eigen vectors, by the way. Okay. Okay, so, there is swelling error there actually, that is all right. So then, uh, uh, okay. Now next thing is to find out those eigen vectors. So how do we do that? Uh, so first, let us take x1 as something like a1, b1, and then we'll go back to this equation where we where we all started. A minus lambda a2 into x1 has to be zero. Okay. So I put lambda one and then x1, a corresponding vector x1 that has to satisfy. So I put it uh, a1, b1. Okay, then make it equal to 0 and interestingly both of the equation will lead to the same consequence a1 equal to b1. Right. So, here there are infinite solutions, okay. but uh, the remember eigen vectors uh, do not have magnitude, they are only directions. So, I can just put any value I want. If I select a1 equal to b1 equal to alpha, then uh, for any alpha that is also an eigen vector, but for particularly if I put alpha equal to 1, then the eigen vector is given as 1 1 actually. And similarly, this uh, uh, I go to the next one. Okay, if I go to the next one, uh, I'll put lambda two and x two, and then x two I start with a two b two, and similar algebra I'll carry out, and here I'll end up with something like that. And just to cancel out this denominator three, I'll just put beta equal to three here. Okay, then I'll be left out with something like three n minus two. So that's another eigen vector actually. Okay. And suppose if you want to normalize it, you can also normalize this in this one. Okay, uh, I mean. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes people prefer that actually. And the, by the way, the previous one is also not normalized. I mean, if you want to normalize this, uh, this normalized vector will be something like uh, x1 is 1 by square root of 1 square plus 1 square. So, that is 2 and then 1 1, that is a normalized vector, normalized uh, eigen vector. And similarly, if you want to normalize the other one, you have to do this, uh, um, you have to do this uh, something like uh, okay, normal, normalized vector. Okay, so is equal to one by square root of okay nine plus uh, three square is nine plus minus two square is four and then it is three minus two. So that is uh, if I if I well, this one root square root of thirteen will come and then three minus two. That is what I'll get actually. Okay, so depending on the application, uh, for example, if you are interested in uh, in uh, reducing this matrix, okay. For example, similarity transformation. If you want to do, okay, then uh, you will probably you would like to start with these normalized eigen vectors. Actually, okay, there, there will be like uh, some nice properties there. If you start with orthonormal columns for that p matrix, what you discussed before, then p inverse you don't have to take. P transpose is p inverse actually. Okay, that way. Anyway, so coming back to this, let's start with another interesting example, which I'll uh, try to demonstrate here, which is uh, something like this. Okay, a is uh, let us say 3, okay, this is 3, okay, 0, minus 1 and then this is 0, 1, 0 and this 2, 0, 0. If you start with this, uh, this particular matrix, you start with uh, again the same thing, you start with a minus uh, lambda i, that i 3 basically uh, is equal to 0 and then you will end up with something like lambda minus 2 into lambda minus 1 whole square equal to 0. If you do this exercise, it will find out. So, what does it give us? Lambda 1, 2, 3 is equal to something like lambda 1, 2, lambda 2, 1, lambda 3 also 1, remember that. Okay. 
that means we have uh, this uh, this repeated uh, eigen values here so if you go back to our uh, observation before then tell okay it, uh, there may be a possibility of uh, finding independent eigen vectors is still a possibility so just because you have a repeated eigen value doesn't mean you don't have the possibility of finding out linearly independent eigen vector that's what i want to demonstrate here in this example and see that okay in this particular case it will be possible to find out linearly independent eigen vector still okay, even though the eigen values are repeated okay so uh, how do you do that now, now for lambda 1 equal to 2 okay this particular thing is fairly straightforward you do the same same exercise so you find out uh, something like uh, it will turn out to be like x1 if you find out it will be 1 0 1 so that is that is fairly straightforward we don't have to uh, see too much of that actually okay but if i put uh, lambda 2 equal to 1 which is also lambda 3 okay then i will be left out with some equations like that actually and then probably x2 i'll take it uh, i mean this, this uh, okay <coughs> okay so something like uh, a2 b2 and c2 i'll start with that okay and then i'll end up with some equations like that so 2a2 minus c2 is equal to 0 and then there will interestingly there will be an there will be an identity actually there will not be an equation okay if you if you see that go back and put it there in this equation okay if if you and then uh, the last one will be also 2a2 minus c2 equal to 0 so these three equations you'll end up with what does it give us actually okay so if i take a2 equal to okay now what does that give me c2 equal to 2a2 okay that's for sure so if i take a2 equal to some some value beta then c2 equal to 2 beta that's that that's that's okay because the one of these equations are giving that actually now this particular equation what you see here okay is an identity really it's not an equation it is uh, very apparent from what you put there actually okay because so it is remember this is lambda i and all that actually so it will get uh, and lambda is 1 here okay so lambda that means this 1 minus 1 is 0 if you say this this particular okay why this is coming because there is an element 1 here okay and then you have a lambda value also 1 okay so uh, this particular 1 minus 1 becomes 0 actually here so this entire row becomes like 0 0 0 so 0 into a, a 2 plus 0 into b 2 plus 0 into c 2 that is a 0 basically. So that is why you will get 0 equal to 0 here and if you have something like this that is an indicator okay, that there is still that that is an eigen vector which is independent actually. Okay. So that is a if you have uh, if it happens to be like uh, an identity then uh, you have an uh, uh, independent eigen vector why the why I will see that I will show you that actually and if you have uh, two identities like that. So obviously you will have two independent eigen vectors like that actually. Okay. So let us see why it is so because see because what you got what you got here is a2 is beta and uh, c2 is 2 beta that is all it uh, it uh, shows me actually right. So let us uh, carry on with that. So what I get uh, I get uh, a2 okay sorry I get a2 equal to uh, beta okay and c2 equal to 2 beta I got that actually. Okay. Now, what about B2? Okay. B, what about B2? And B2 can be anything actually, really, right? I mean, I because that is not related to A2 and C2, so I can select some some gamma value like that actually. So, if that is the case, then my X2 eigen vector is something like what I am getting A2, which is beta, B2 is gamma, and C2 is 2 beta. Okay. So, that one I can simply write something like beta into 1, 0, 2 plus something like gamma into. Uh, 0 1 0 right and remember all these are with respect to lambda 2 uh, lambda 3 equal to 1 okay that is the case that you are analyzing lambda 1 equal to 2 we, we have got an independent eigen vector already okay so that is uh, that is what I am telling this one we have already got actually so that is not a problem for us we are just exploring the other case okay for which we can solve now if you see we select uh, some I mean for any choice of beta and gamma we will have a eigen vector with us actually right. So, I can comfortably tell that this is like an eigen vector okay and that is another eigen vector actually. 
So, in, in principle what I will have, I have x 2 equal to something like 1 0 2 and I can select x 3 to be 0 1 0 okay. and as you rightly, I mean if you have shown seen before x 1 equal to 1 0 1. So, x 1 equal to 1 0 1. And these are linearly independent with each other. So, that is why you get a set of Eisen vectors which are linearly independent of each other even when you have a repeated Eisen value actually. That is the message that I wanted to demonstrate in one example actually. Okay. So, the key, key observation here is whether you have something like an identity on the way or not actually. Okay. Now, let us continue with our uh, I mean discussion. Some additional properties of Eisen values and Eisen vectors uh, we will see uh, here. We saw a lot of uh, properties last uh, last time and uh, there are interesting additional properties available here which we will see there actually. One thing is uh, when you talk about determinant of a matrix, okay, you can just multiply the Eisen values and get the determinant. In other words, if somebody has given us uh, a set of Eisen values, okay, then we really do not do not need the entries of the element of A is you can simply multiply the Eisen values and say okay, I do not need to know all the entries individually about the matrix, but I can still know the determinant value and similarly, I can still know the trace of this this matrix actually. Okay. So, that is the summation of Eisen values, the summation of Eisen values are nothing but trace some trace of the matrix A, product of the Eisen values are determinant of A. So, these are sometimes very handy, but what does it tell you? There is another consequence that if one of the Eisen value is 0, then the determinant is guaranteed to be 0, it is a multiplication terms anyway. Okay. So, that is another consequence which uh, turns out from these interesting results actually. Now, okay, the, if this characteristic equation determinant of lambda i minus a, okay, even though we saw in this, this example, these are all a minus lambda i, but uh, typically we will uh, interpret as lambda i minus a. This. So, if you, if you expand this determinant of lambda i minus a and uh, assuming that a is an n by n matrix, okay, we will uh, land up with this uh, nth order polynomial, I think this is a misnomer here, I mean this is a small error out here, this is not lambda n, okay, this is lambda to the power n. Okay. So, we will uh, we'll, uh, land up with an nth order uh, polynomial okay. and then uh, what interestingly turns out that uh, uh, this a to the uh, this this coefficient what you have here a n minus 1 is negative of trace of a and then this a 0 is nothing but uh, that way. Okay. So, this this uh, particular thing this particular property I, uh, I have not seen too much of usage uh, in in our way of uh, I mean whatever we are going to discuss later. So, that is uh, I mean that is a ob observation that you can probably just remember. Okay. And okay, now coming back to the the example that I mean the property that we discussed before. So remember that uh, this is the thing we discussed before, that if A is real and symmetric, or equivalently, if it is complex and Hermitian. Okay, remember real and symmetric means A equal to A transpose, and complex and Hermitian means okay this this particular thing means A equal to A, a star rather. Okay, a star is uh, conjugate transpose actually. So then uh, these are all complex. Uh, I mean, if you if your A matrix has complex entries, then we'll worry about those things actually. Anyway, so if it is uh, real and symmetric, that means A equal to A transpose. Then we know for sure that the Eisen values are real. Okay, we discussed about that, and probably are going to show that in this class also. Now, the, uh, as a related thing, okay, we ask the other question: What if the A matrix is real but skew symmetric? that means a equal to minus of a transpose or similarly if it is q hermitian that means a equal to minus a star okay then it turns out the eigen values are all purely imaginary there is no real component so the eigen values will sit on the j omega axis actually that means uh, it is purely imaginary only okay so that is the interesting thing you can uh, you can so see that actually all right then there is another associated property that is this is this all talks about uh, Eisen values being real okay. and we also know that uh, the symmetric uh, matrix okay, A, if A is symmetric then the Eisen vectors associated with two distinct Eisen values are also orthogonal. Okay. If lambda 1, lambda 2 are distinct they are not same not repeated, okay. they are real of course, but if you take let us say 1, uh, 2, 2, 3 like that. So, if you compare the Eisen vector with 1 
I mean corresponding to lambda equal to 1 and lambda equal to 3, lambda equal to 1, lambda equal to 2 like that actually. Okay, then these uh, eigenvectors are uh, guaranteed to be orthogonal actually. Okay, we will see, we'll see that. Okay. And then uh, uh, okay, there is an important property here. Okay, this uh, this particular uh, what you see here is called Rayleigh quotient actually. Okay. This x transpose x divided by x transpose x. Remember, x transpose x is nothing but second norm square actually. Okay. So if you if you if you alternatively, what you some some people write that okay, this is lambda minimum of lambda minimum of a okay into norm x okay second norm square is less than equal to x transpose a x is less than equal to lambda max of a okay into norm of norm 2 of x. So, this is this is one and the same thing whatever way is written actually and this particular way of writing probably you will see many nonlinear control analysis and all okay. We want bounded uh, information actually whether the value remains error remains bounded and things like that and if you have a symmetric matrix that goes along with this these eigen values then this uh, this is a nice result that you can tell a x transpose a x is guaranteed to be bounded from both up and both uh, up and below. Okay. So, this is a nice property that uh, comes handy actually. So, in a comp in a in an alternate way you can define a Rayleigh quotient something like this and then tell this Rayleigh quotient is bounded between this uh, minimum and maximum Eisen values actually. Uh, remember these Eisen values are guaranteed to be real numbers. So, you do not have any problem of comparing this. this. Okay. All right. Now, let us see some of the proofs here okay, that uh, what is the proof that uh, these two especially okay. if the uh, if a matrix is real uh, and symmetric okay, symmetric matrix then the Eisen values are real okay, that is what we want to show and we also want to show that uh, if a matrix if a matrix is symmetric then the Eisen vectors associated with two distinct Eisen values okay, there is again a small print mistake okay, okay. this is n actually. Okay two distinct Eisen values okay, are orthogonal. Okay, we want to show that quickly. So, how do you see that? Now, let us say you have a vector, you have a matrix A for which you are talking about a lambda and x pair actually. So, we have A x equal to lambda x okay, that is for sure. Okay. What you are going to show is something like this. If, a, if for a, a real symmetric matrix Eisen values are I mean for a symmetric matrix Eisen values are uh, real that is what you want to show actually. So, we start with this definition and interestingly it turns out that uh, if I take uh, conjugate uh, I mean complex conjugate of lambda the corresponding Eisen vector is also a complex conjugate of x actually. Okay. So, with that I can also write a into x bar is nothing but lambda bar into x bar. Okay. Right. So, that I can uh, I can write that it that way actually. Okay. Then I, what I do? I will I will multiply this side okay, with an x bar transpose, and this is also like way x bar transpose. Okay, that means I will get something like lambda into uh, lambda is a scalar. Remember that x bar transpose into x bar. I mean into x. Okay. Similarly, if I take uh, uh, this particular thing, I will not uh, do directly as such. Okay, I will take something like a transpose basically. So, what I get x bar transpose remember a b transpose is b transpose a transpose. So, I will get a transpose is equal to lambda bar uh, into s bar transpose actually okay, because x bar transpose into lambda lambda bar is a scalar quantity and because it is a scalar quantity I can write that to actually I mean if if I really want to actually. Okay. Now, what I do here okay, I want to have a similar expression like that. So, I will do multiply this uh, this expression a, a bar transpose. Okay, remember a bar I mean a, this is uh, also equal to a basically right. So, I can take out this transpose actually here okay, because a, a transpose equal to a then I will do a multiplication of x okay, then what I get lambda bar x bar transpose into x. Okay. Now, if you see this equation this is same as this okay, and hence this two have to be same actually. Okay. So, if, if that is the case what I am getting here lambda minus lambda bar multiplied by x bar transpose x is equal to 0. 
Now, if I take x bar into x, okay, this this is nothing but uh, like a norm actually, right? This particular quantity is nothing but uh, like norm x square sort of thing. So that cannot be equal to zero. Okay, we are not looking at a trivial eigen vector here. Okay, so what that gives me, so this is absolute. I mean, this is not equal to zero, and hence that gives me lambda equal to lambda bar. And lambda equal to lambda bar. That means that means lambda is real actually. Right. So we cannot have. Uh, uh, I mean, for a symmetric matrix, where, where the critical observation comes, critical comes uh, here to here actually. Okay, this a transpose is equal to a. If it is not there, then you could not have written this actually. Okay, so if it is a symmetric matrix, then lambda has to be real actually. Okay, now let us show the other one also quickly. That if you have uh, okay eigen vectors associated with two distinct eigen eigen values are supposed to be orthogonal. How do we show that? It's also fairly similar similar proof sort of thing. So let's say if you are having the a lambda one x one pair and lambda two x two pair. So what is this? A x one okay. So by by definition, I talk about a x one. Okay, is equal to lambda one x one, and similarly, if I talk uh, different pair a x two equal to lambda two x two. All right. Now if I if I take again this uh, this transpose of this. Okay, what do I get? X two transpose. Okay. And a transpose, and a transpose is a. Remember that we are talking about a symmetric matrix again, and then uh, is equal to. Okay, this is equal to lambda two. What is happening? Okay, I think okay lambda two into uh, x two transpose. Okay, so because lambda two is a scalar anyway, so I can I can do that actually. Okay, so what are you getting here? I mean, if I uh, If I do this uh, x two transpose, okay, from here this equation, if I multiply with let's say x two transpose a x one, okay, then I get lambda one into x two transpose x one, okay, and if I do this post multiplication here by x one, then I get x two transpose a x one is nothing but lambda two x two transpose x one, okay, right? And similarly, now you see this this term is same as this term, okay. And hence the other two terms have to be there. So that means lambda one minus lambda two into x two transpose x one is equal to zero. But lambda two, uh, lambda one, and lambda two are distinct, so they are not. This is this is not equal to zero. And hence x two transpose x one is to be zero. That means these two are orthogonal actually. X two and x one are orthogonal. This inner product between x two and x one actually. Okay, so this is. Uh, Like a proof where it can very clearly show that okay, if these are the two properties that you can so easily have actually. Okay, now uh, coming to the gen generalized eigen vectors we saw last class, but then the definition part I didn't cover. So let's see like uh, what does it imply? What does it mean actually? Okay, now let's take a three by three uh, matrix for our simplicity. And then you tell, okay, this three by three matrix is lambda one and lambda two, lambda two repeated twice actually. Okay. Then what you what you have is so let's uh, because lambda two and lambda two repeated, I I may not be have I mean I may not be able to find a linear independent eigen vector. In that the case I am talking about. Okay. In that case, what will I do actually? Okay, let me perturb the same matrix by a small quantity epsilon, where B is an arbitrary matrix actually of same dimension. If epsilon is a very small small number, okay, and I'll uh, I'll take arbitrary V matrix of same dimension and formulate this a epsilon matrix actually. Okay, then I'll perturb it in such a way that a epsilon will have distinct eigen values now. Okay, uh, this is not lambda two anymore; it is lambda three actually. Okay, however, because this matrix is perturbed very small quantity, okay, I, I lambda three I can write it as lambda two plus delta basically. So delta is also a very small quantity. Okay, now it turns out interestingly that uh, this v3 can be represented as v2 plus delta times w, where delta is a small number and w is uh, what is called as generalized eigen vector. Okay, okay, this v3 is very close to v2 in that sense. Okay, and then this equations the when epsilon tends to zero, that means extremely small quantity, okay, very small quantity. Then these two equations will be satisfied. 
that means these first two equations are regular eigen vectors and the last one this equation will get satisfied actually okay, w equal to v2 that is why these equations pop up actually. Okay. So, what does it mean really like uh, this w which is generalized eigen vector okay, is very close to the eigen vector v2 that it is perturbed away by a small quantity okay. and then I write uh, I mean uh, uh, the w I mean this w what you see here okay, will satisfy this kind of uh, I mean this uh, identities and things like that actually. Okay. So, what you are doing here I mean you are telling that okay, I, I, I do not have uh, I do not have to work with the same A matrix that is given to me, but I will put off this A matrix by a small quantity arbitrarily selecting V and uh, putting this uh, summation actually and then find out the eigen values of this A epsilon okay. and then when epsilon tends to 0 then these two equations get satisfied actually okay. and this uh, W also goes close to like V3, but W is different from V3 of course. So, these are all implications more on that uh, if I as I told in the last class you can see it in the Thomas Coilath book actually. Okay, another concept in matrix theory which is also which is important in optimal control theory especially okay. and most of the time we will use in optimization theory optimal control theory like that and what is this actually. Now, if you have a vector x1 to xn okay, then you take any polynomial function for which every term is of degree 2. Okay, that is critical actually. Okay. Deg every term okay, will will of will be of degree 2 actually. Okay. Then this particular polynomial is called a quadratic form actually. Okay. And interestingly, if it is a quadratic form, then we can always express this in terms of x transpose x. Okay. And given a choice, we'll select a as a as a symmetric matrix. And I think by now we have sufficient uh, knowledge to see why we want symmetric matrix. Okay. There are many nice properties uh, for a symmetric matrix actually. All right. So you can, for example, if you see this this expression back, each of the term has degree two. Okay. And if you want to put it in this form, then you can uh, you can do that either this way or that way. If you select a matrix like that you can do that or a matrix this way also you can do that, but given these two choices obviously we would like to see this way because this matrix is a symmetric matrix this is not actually okay. All right. Now, we will quickly review the singular value decomposition same example what we discussed last class how do you do that actually we started with an uh, with an A matrix something like this okay. then the first thing is to find out singular values and singular values are square positive square root of Eigen values of A transpose A and A transpose A is something like this and then A transpose A is guaranteed to be a positive semi definite matrix both A transpose A, a both A transpose A as well as A, a transpose right both are positive semi definite we have seen that before and then A transpose A uh, Eigen values are 4 0 0 okay. if this particular Eigen value if I find out it happens to be 4 0 0 then Eigen vectors associated with that is all given to us actually and in this case also see whether the Eigen values are repeated but eigen vectors you can still find out linear independent eigen vectors you don't need to find out generalized eigen vector what i mean actually okay. all right then sing then singular values are given as that way okay and the values are already ordered if it is not ordered then you have to order that first actually so zeros will be last and the non zero values will be in the top actually then y1 is given something like 1 by x sigma 1 into ax1 which is all algebra is given then y2 we have to find out in such a way that it is orthonormal to y1. So, y2 if I select that then y1 and y2 are orthonormal provided y1 and y2 inner product which is in this case is like this is equal to 0 and y y2 and y2 inner product with respect to itself okay, it is to be like uh, norm 1 basically this is a normal square. So, norm has to be 1 actually. So, if you put this uh, two identities I mean two equations then you will find out what is y2 actually. Okay, so, you had y1 and you will have y2 now. So, p matrix is y1 and y2 that is given to you and q matrix is x1, x2, x3 you put them together and take a transpose actually. Okay. So, that is given to you like this actually. So, the d matrix is given like this only one non-zero value. So, that is 1 sigma 1 here and then you are all these other elements are 0 actually. So, what you have now the singular value decomposition which tells you that a equal to p d q remember that. So, that is a equal to p d q that will and if you do that p d q it turns out to be a actually. Okay. 
So, that is that is what it uh, tells you actually. So, that is the singular value decomposition. And uh, one last observation here is that I told that derivative of uh, A inverse of T is something like this. Okay, how do you get that? That is also easy to see that okay, if you if you take a B matrix which is inverse of that A inverse of T is equal to B T, we just define that way. Then because B is A inverse, okay, A times B equal to identity okay, and you take derivative both sides. What do you what do you get if you take derivative both sides? This is identity matrix. Okay, so derivative of that is zero, and then you tell okay the if I if I continue with this uh, the multiplication identity, then this is the multiplication identity. Remember order cannot be changed here; order has to be same. And then dv by dt is nothing but that because I take this one to the right hand side. This is that with a negative sign, and then a inverse I pre multiply, so I get that way. Okay, and dv by dt b by definition is a inverse actually. So, d a inverse uh, uh, by d t is nothing but like this, okay. this is very close to what you know in scalar operations and such. Okay. So, I think all of this uh, has given us some idea of uh, matrix theory, we can do so many, I mean, you can make use of so many properties, you can do algebra with respect to matrix theory, you can do calculus with respect to matrix theory, you can apply chain rules and you can do several several things with respect to matrix theory, all of which will be very handy for our modern control. I mean tech tricks and techniques which we will discuss further actually. Now, just for you to get comfortable with uh, uh, these matrix theory notations, I have given some practice problems, you can probably see some of these things, very quickly we will we'll see what, what we mean in this actually. Okay. So, this problem 1 uh, A matrix is given, I suggest that you, you solve this yourself to get comfortable with uh, what all we learn from these couple of lectures actually. So, if A matrix is like this, then you have to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this A matrix okay. and in addition you have to find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors for all these actually like A inverse, A to the power 3, A to the power 4 and as well as this polynomial, but remember you do not have to compute this matrix and find out. Okay. You have to use some of these uh, properties that you studied and then you can quickly find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors actually. Now, you have to show that uh, this particular identity Remember, we, we discussed about the transpose, A B transpose is B transpose A transpose. It is also valid for, for inverse sense actually, A B whole inverse is B inverse A inverse provided the matrix inverses exist. Okay. So, if you assume that the matrix inverses do exist, then you have to show that this identity is also valid actually. Okay. Now, problem number 3 asks you to do that, this it, it is a something called Hadamard matrix is defined as n by n matrix where all these values are either plus 1 or minus 1. Okay, there are some nice uh, properties for that and all that and it also satisfies this identity A transpose A equal to n into i. Okay, you cannot just keep on putting a minus 1 plus 1 arbitrarily, you have to put it uh, these elements in such a way that A transpose A this equal to n times identity that has to be satisfied. Now, under those conditions you have to show that uh, determinant of this particular matrix is n in n to the power n n by 2, where n is the dimension of this uh, matrix. Uh, remember, A is n by n matrix actually. Now, problem number 4, okay, so that the determinant of a negative definite mat n by n matrix is positive if n is even and negative if, if n is odd. So, this is very clear statement, so I will not uh, elaborate on that. And then uh, you can number of problem number 5, it tells you that uh, if uh, A let A and P be n by n matrices, both are square matrices and P is non-singular of course. Then you have to show that trace of A is equal to trace of this. Remember this is also like uh, similarity transformation. Okay. And if you, uh, I mean probably one small hint is you can make use of some of these uh, eigenvalue properties for trace and all that. But you have to also show that why these eigenvalues uh, of a similarity transform, I mean if you take a similarity transformation, eigenvalues are preserved actually you have to show that first and then you take and relate those properties and all that actually. All right, so that is uh, number 5 and then number 6 is something like this, you start with the definition of uh, norm P okay, okay, and probably there is a comma missed out here, so let me put that here. Okay. So, x is uh, in R n space that means x is n by n basically okay. and in that case you have to show that as P goes to infinity, P tends to infinity the pth norm is nothing but infinity norm. Okay. You know infinity norm has a separate formula and compared to p norm actually. So, you have to uh, when p goes to infinity you can show that both of these are compatible actually. 
Okay. And then uh, you have to compute these matrix norms or induced norms what you discussed as well as this uh, I mean this is not P of A, this is rather uh, okay, this is rather rho of A, okay, okay, spectral radius. Okay. This is uh, rho of A of a matrix for problem 1, problem 1 is like that, so we can show that actually. Okay. And then you have to find out the singular value decomposition for this 2 by 3 matrix, you have to give all the steps here. And you can also verify your results quickly either by long hand calculation or quickly by MATLAB is also fine. What P D Q, what you find out, okay, then you have to tell P times D times Q, if you multiply using MATLAB, you will see that this is nothing but A. And if that does not uh, turn out to be A, obviously you have done some mistake somewhere and then you have to go back and correct your steps actually. In fact, you can if you use uh, SBD command of MATLAB, okay, MATLAB gives you that uh, I, I told you before, SBD command. Okay, then uh, SPT of A will probably give you all this P, Q, all sort of matrix actually, P, D, Q, all the three will give you actually. But I do not want that, I want you to give uh, all the steps along with long end calculation and probably you can verify your results with that actually. And problem number 9 and 10, some of these identities that we discussed with respect to vector, vector matrix calculus are uh, will, will not take it for, uh, for granted, we will try to show that actually. Okay, so, that means, uh, if you take this particular quadratic form, uh, you have to see that it is there, del by del x is equal to that. And then, you can, this general uh, formula, what we discussed, also need to show that actually. Okay. So, this couple of problems, uh, like uh, some 10 problems I have listed out. If you solve it yourself, then I think you will get lot of confidence uh, to understand this as well as proceed further actually. All right, as I told this uh, three lectures has given us a quick overview of a variety of concepts from matrix theory, matrix theory which will help us uh, proceeding further in our control theory concepts uh, later. That with that message, I will stop here. Thank you.